Hi everyone, this is Mr. West. Today we're doing a worksheet from Math Drills called Missing Numbers in Equations. You can check this out at mathdrills.com or there will be a link in the description below. Now before we get into this, if this is the first time you're seeing letters in equations, don't be afraid, okay? So I'm gonna give a little bit of background information. If you wanna skip ahead, that's fine. But essentially every time we see a letter, that just rep represents an unknown amount. So you could think of it as a blank. So y times three equals 15, that could be the same as blank times three equals 15, or question mark times three equals 15. So we know it's uh, five, so we'd write the answer as y equals five. So that missing value, which we called y, the variable as we call them, is five, okay? Now, the thing that we'll need help with understanding as we go through these problems, instead of just trying to do it in our head, is understand that equ uh, equal signs and equations are like a scale, okay? What you do to one side affects the other side. It has to be balanced for it to be equal. So let's take 10 equals 10. Obviously, that's a true statement. That's what equations do. They make true statements, okay? So check, we do know 10 equals 10. But what happens if we add five to one side of the equal sign and not to the other. So see, we did it on the right side, but not the left side. What does that do? Well, we'd get the statement 15 equals 10, and we know that is not true. That would be the equivalent of adding weight to this side and not to the left side. So what would happen? Obviously, it would tilt down on the right side. It would look like this instead of the other way, okay? So what happens is the rule of math is if we add to one side, then we consequently also have to add to the other side. So if I add five on the right side, I have to add five on the left side also. What does that do? Well, we get 15 equals 15. Now this works for other operations as well, not just adding, but also multiplication, division, subtraction, the most common ones, of course. Um, so let's go ahead and just give another example, which is let's divide. So we could divide 10 by two, divide 10 by two, we get five equals five, it checks out. Again, if we only divided one side by two and not the other, then we get five equals 10 and that's not true. We could multiply it. We could do times two to both sides, we can subtract from both sides and you'll notice that no matter what we do, as long as we do the same thing to both sides, it's gonna be equal. How does that help us? Well. This helps us isolate variables. That's the goal, is to isolate the variable. We wanna get it by itself because that's what we're trying to solve. We're trying to find this missing piece of information. Some people like to just do it in their head, and I have no problem with that initially, but once you get into higher mathematics, it's very difficult to do multiple steps in your head, so of course we have a process. That highlighter is not big enough. You can see me struggling with it. Okay, so now we're trying to isolate R. We're trying to get R by itself, on one side of the equal sign. We want it to be r equals some number right there, okay? So the way we do this is we can think of ourselves, okay, some number times 13 equals 13. If you're a clever person, you might be able to say, okay, I know r is equal to one, okay? And that's fine. But the process for doing this is to undo the operation. We wanna do the inverse operations. So if we were, if we wanted to go backwards to find something, we would do inverse operation. For example, if I added $5 to my wallet, okay, and I wanted to say, okay, where did I start? If I added $5, how do I go back and find out how much I start with? I would subtract $5. So if I had an unknown amount and I added $5, if I wanted to find out where I started with, I would undo it by subtracting five. Same thing with multiplication. If I wanna multiply by, let's say, two, to undo that, I would divide. So division and Multiplication are inverse operations, addition and subtraction are inverse operations. Okay, I promise that's it. I'm getting into it. I should have made a disclaimer at the start that this video starts at whatever time this is, okay? So I'm gonna go back and maybe make a note of that. But anyway, so we're trying to isolate R, so what we're gonna do here is we're gonna divide both sides by 13. What happens when we do that? Well, what happens is the times 13 divide 13 are canceled. We undo the multiplication and we're left with R on the left side. And then we have 13 divided by 13, and that is one. We get to the same place. Now you're probably thinking, that's way harder than just doing it my way. I understand that. I just wanted to present it this way because once we get into higher mathematics, that's what you're gonna do, okay? So we have this one. This one is gonna require a non-algebraic explanation, okay, the second one. But we're thinking to ourselves, 66 divided by something equals 11. This we think, okay, if it's 11, we can go in reverse, 11 times W equals 66. So we think to ourselves, okay, we need to divide by 11. 
to both sides, okay? So that is one way to do it. Or you think, okay, what times 11 equals 66? And we know that W equals six. Okay, that's one way to do that problem. Um, I'm gonna forego showing the other method, which is like this. And this one actually requires a cross multiplication, which is a little too advanced for probably most of the viewers here. So I'm going to go ahead and skip that one, showing you the algebraic way. Let's do another one here. If we have W plus 18, I'm going to subtract 18 from both sides. We identify here that 18 is the operation taking place, and we want to do the inverse. We want to undo adding 18 to find our missing value. So we subtract 18 from plus 18 and it goes away. We're left with W. However, you just can't do minus 18 on one side. You also have to do it to the other side. So we have 22 minus 18 and that is four and that is our answer. Does four, and I would encourage you guys to check your answers, does four plus 18 equal 22? Yes, it does. Check. That is good. Okay. Let's do a couple more of the more basic ones. So we have V minus eight equals nine. Okay. So the inverse operation here, instead of minusing eight, we're going to add eight. We're gonna add eight to both sides and we have V equals, okay? Again, you had to do it to both sides of the equal sign. Notice how I keep it lined up. A lot of teachers will teach this little line thing, not lion king, lion thing, which is keep the equal sign right underneath and we're left with V on the left side because this cancels away. We undo the negative eight minus eight by adding eight and we have nine plus eight, which is 17. Does 17 minus eight? equal nine, and it sure does, okay? Let's do a couple more. So here we have 17 plus D equals 29. We could just go minus 17 from both sides. And we have D by itself, because that undoes the 17 there. That's technically an adding 17, and that equals 12. So D equals 12. 12 plus 17 would be equal to 29. Okay, let's do another one over here. How do you undo divide? We already said that's multiply. So we need to multiply both sides by eight. Okay, so I'm gonna multiply both sides by eight. Why do we do that? Because that will cancel out the divide by eight and we're left with just y. Then we have 17 times eight on the right side and we have to do that math problem. So as we do 17 times eight, it's gonna look something like this, six, five, and then that is, uh, what is it? Da -da 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 -da. Eight, that's 13. Oh my goodness, that took me way too long. So 136. So y equals 136. 136 divided by 8 equals 17. Okay, I'm going to do a couple more and then I'm going to show you kind of like the trickier ones. So let me do, okay, so we have d times 15. How do we undo times 15? Is we are going to divide both sides by 15. So I'm going to do 75 divided by 15 and 15 divided by 15. The way I like to show it though is as a fraction, it's much easier to, much more quick. It's, yeah, much more quick to write. So it's quicker to write. That's probably a better way to say it. So I take 15 divided by 15. Again, that cancels out. I'm left with D equals 75 divided by 15. And let's see, it goes four times into 60. So that means it's five. 75 divided by 15 equals five. And that's how we do that one. Let's get into some of the tougher ones. So I'm gonna show you this real quick. The inverse operation of plus, you're not gonna subtract 24, okay? And you're not, oh, sorry, you are subtracting 24. You're not gonna add 24 because you see a minus sign. The minus is applied in front of the Q. So really we want the inverse operation of this 24, and it's a positive 24. So essentially what we're gonna do here is we're gonna do the opposite of positive 24 by subtracting 24 to both sides, okay? So now we have minus Q. Don't forget this minus sign. This probably, uh, this one in particular is probably gonna confuse some students. This is more advanced, so don't worry about it too much. Then we have 13 minus 24, okay? And what do we get for an answer here? We're gonna get negative, what is that? Uh, 11, okay, yeah, negative 11 is our answer. Um, but the problem is we have this minus sign in front of Q. So how do you get rid of a minus sign? This is something I just wanted to talk about real briefly. What we need to do here is we need to multiply both sides by negative one. Okay, so multiplying both sides by negative one, we'll get rid of the negative sign. So we're going to be left with Q equals positive 11. Okay, so positive 11 is our answer here. And you can ch double check that 24 minus 11, is that equal to 13? And it is, okay? So that's a way we can double check that. Let's do one more just so I can show you how that works. I'm looking for something where it's minus, uh-huh, here we go. So first step, 
Either you can go 29 minus what equals 19. Some of you are going to find out that's 10 right away, okay, and just do it that way. I want to show it the algebraic way just in case you want to see it. So I'm going to subtract 29 because that's a positive 29 from both sides. When I'm done with that, I get negative y equals negative 10. In order to get rid of the negative y, I need to multiply by negative 1. Why did that work? I'm sorry I didn't explain that before. If you have a negative times a negative, that's going to be equal to a positive. So I have a negative 1 times a negative y. That's going to give me a positive y. That's what I need there. So I have y equals 10, and that's my answer there. Okay, so again, that's what we're doing for this side of the worksheet. I didn't want to cover this guy right here because that's a little bit different algebraically in case you didn't know. But all these you can do without algebra, but I just wanted to show that just in case you were curious. If you need me to do more problems on this worksheet, let me know. But that's all I have for, for today. Make sure to tune in next time right here on Wes Explains Best.